Welcome to That's Good Sports. I am Brandon. I've never been so happy to be late on posting a video perna. Now, Wilkies and I started writing this Broncos free agency episode on February 12th, and much of what we started to discuss would be utterly useless right now. Oh yeah, okay, okay, how does that make this different than any other episode? Ha ha ha, I get it. And I don't know, but we have more real info now to work with than we did four weeks ago. AJ Boye, now a Bronco. Chris Jones getting tagged in Kansas City. Wolf and both Harrises, all likely to test free agency. There are a lot of moving parts for the Broncos this free agency period, and with the CBA agreement still looming, nothing has solidified as everyone sort of waits that out. Today, I want to discuss where the Broncos are and what they might do in terms of letting guys go and players they could target next week when free agency actually starts, assuming the CBA gets done and nothing hinders that. Let's get sports! Subscribe here if you want me to stop making that sound and for football coverage I do football videos every week multiple videos XFL NFL free agency draft all coming up I do have big dick patreon shout outs for Ben Eichton upping to ten dollars David I still get a hard-on when I think about B Pern good and then it cuts off by reading this you now owe me your beard bullshit I do not Jack Nichols sorry Dustin already saw invisible man go bills and charter member of the buy a ref foundation Do you just donate and then delete and then redonate so I feel like I've read your name several times charter member of the buy a ref foundation But I, I appreciate it and Gertrude. Thank you guys so much for your donations. Patreon.com slash That's Good Sports. That's how you keep the lights on here at That's Good Sports. And our Patreon only video will be dropping, I believe, Saturday, shooting at this week. And it's going to be the anti all decade team. All right, to understand the Broncos free agency, first you need to know the list of unrestricted free agents. The Broncos have. These are the players who can do whatever the hell they want once free agency opens, unless the Broncos get them a new deal prior and they agree to it. Now, you've got Chris Harris, Derek Wolf, Shelby Harris, Theo Riddick, Casey Kreider, Ron Leary, Adam Gotsis, Cyrus Jones, Billy Wynn, Jeremiah Tauchu, Corey Nelson, Justin Simmons, Devontae Booker, Connor McGovern, Diamante Thomas, Will Parks, and Daddy Nicholas who is not a father, by the way. John Elway will decline the team option on guard Ron Leary and pick up the options for Todd Davis and the Gooch Slayer Brandon McManus. Uh, players we know who will not be back in addition to Leary are Devontae Booker, Theo Riddick, Adam Gotsis, and Corey Nelson. Now, Chris Harris will almost certainly test free agency after the AJ Boye trade, unless he somehow likes the idea of playing for a team-friendly price again in Denver alongside two good corners in Bryce Callahan and AJ Boye. Now we assume the Broncos would resign Derek Wolf or Shelby Harris. They seem more interested in bringing Wolf back because of the price tag, but right now both guys appear to be on their way to test free agency. And the Broncos may actually pursue a running back in free agency. Uh, they could explore everyone from Derrick Henry to Jordan Howard. Now I'm not sold free agency is the way to go for a running back, and I'd be less surprised to find out Mike Vrabel is a devout vegan than if the Titans actually let Derrick Henry get to free agency. He's the one back that I would go all in for. Can you imagine Henry pounding the Chiefs twice a year? Cause I can, oh I can. Now, center Connor McGovern seems like a guy the Broncos have to sign, but so did Matt Paradis, so who the hell knows. Then you have Will Parks and Justin Simmons. Parks and Rec, as Ryan Green so affectionately called them. It would be awesome to keep both, but I don't believe that's happening. The Broncos will franchise tag Justin Simmons if they cannot get a deal done, and he seems to be the top priority. You don't get rid of a safety who can cover, and Justin Simmons gave up a passer rating of 32.1, lowest in the NFL. He had the third best tackling efficiency rating, according to Pro Football Focus. I may have mentioned that in the AJ Boye episode. We all want Simmons back. He will be back. He is that good. The guy moving 
on is probably Will Parks. Will Parks is about to make a lot of money to play in another city. Uh, I had dreams about stealing Kansas City's 3-4 defensive end, Chris Jones. And this is very appealing because we have that memory of Neil Smith fueling our hatred of the Chiefs and the primal need to take their best players and to inflict them back onto them in a very hateful fashion. Now Jones still hasn't technically been tagged by the Chiefs because the franchise tag deadline keeps moving back because of the CBA bullshit, but even if he is traded from Kansas City, there's almost no chance in hell they trade him within the AFC West. Again, the Broncos can re-sign either Derek Wolf or Shelby Harris, but not both. You also have Draymond Jones, who proved at the end of his rookie year that he can be a full-time player on defense, but depth is important. And if San Francisco proved anything this year, it's that you can never have too many options on the defensive line, especially if you want to lose the Super Bowl with a better looking quarterback. And luckily for the Broncos, I don't know who that is here. Now, Denver may sign multiple defensive linemen, according to the most recent reports. I would be very excited if Denver signed Texans no nose tackle DJ Reader, who was the first player I put on this list a month ago when Will and I started writing this thing. DJ Tanner, DJ Connor, DJ Reader uh, <laughs> will have a lot of teams interested in his services, and his name has gained a lot of traction for the Broncos, and he would be a huge piece for a defensive wall that would make even Donald Trump horny. Reader is six foot three, 347 pounds, and an elite level run stopper about to hit his prime. I also like Steelers nose tackle Javon Hargrave, who unlike Reader, has a knack for getting to the quarterback with 10 and a half sacks over the last two years. Mike Purcell emerged as a great nose tackle last year in Denver, but I'm assuming you can rotate tackles and play no multiple nose tackles on the line if desired. Hargrave, in terms of size, is more versatile on where he can play on the line. Reader is just a behemoth who is 20 pounds heavier than Mike Purcell, but seeing them together on the line would be impressive. Until you remember the Chiefs never run the football, so maybe take a look at the Seahaw Seahawks defensive lineman, not accused of domestic violence, Quinton Jefferson, who also has a big upside and could be taken away from Seattle if you overpay him just a little bit. What I mean by that is he should be one of the uh, cheaper defensive linemen available, but the Seahawks may really want him back, but if you outbid just Seattle, you might be able to get him. Now, the mid-level contracts are often the smartest in free agency in the mark of a wise team, and there's a few that immediately make the Broncos better. And hear me out on this first one, because this is my crazy idea. I think the Broncos should sign Falcons tight end Austin Hooper. Don't get me wrong, I'm pulling for Jake Butt more than anyone, but that doesn't change the fact that God hates Butt's knees. With the same sort of ferocity that I hate knees with butts. It's the thing I hate the most. But no offense, but no offense. Noah Fant is the reason Austin Hooper would be an incredible addition to the Broncos offense. A big part of Austin Hooper's success in Atlanta has been because Julio Jones and Calvin Ridley are nearly impossible to cover. If the Broncos have as big of a Henry Ruggs hard-on as Aladdin had for an actual rug, Austin Hooper would give Drew Locke one of the most impossible to cover receiving cores in the league. Like young head coaches, now everyone wants a receiver with blazing speed to be like Tyreek Hill. Hardly any receivers will be him though, which is probably a good thing for the women and children of the world. Austin Hooper would give the Broncos two great receiving threats at tight end and a compliment to a speedster if the Broncos find one in the draft while bringing a different skill set to the field than Fant. Remember, Fant played great in college with TJ Hawkinson on the other side. Fant is going to be the guy to stretch the field with Cortland Sutton. Cortland Sutton and Noah Fant are your guys who will win in single coverage. Hooper is a tactician, a master at finding holes in the zone. He's like having a big slot receiver at tight end, and I could think of nothing more beneficial for a developing quarterback like Drew Locke to have Hooper on offense. You know damn well the Patriots want him, and you know how successful a team can be with two tight ends who can catch. But if the Broncos want to go much cheaper, I'd sign XFL tight end Donald Parham, the six foot eight, 22 year old playing for the Renegades. Cortland Sutton and Noah Fant are both six foot four. 
Now throw in a six foot eight tight end, which secondary can stop three jump ball players in the red zone? The answer, the no fly zone, which doesn't even exist anymore except in real airspace because nobody wants to fly due to the coronavirus. If the Broncos address the offensive line, it will probably be at guard. They may tender swing tackle Elijah Wilkinson and have him play right guard next to Juwan James at right tackle. Elway doesn't have to decide on picking up Garrett Bull's fifth year option until May, giving them time to see how the draft plays out. So if they do pursue a guard, two guys I like are Joe Thune from New England, who will be very pricey because everyone fucking likes him, and Graham Glasgow from Detroit, who can play both guard and center. If we're lucky, Elway will sign the Panthers guard, Greg Van Rotten. No clue if he's good or if that's actually how you say his name, but Van Rotten is a badass name. Moving to defense, a guy I think who should be available because his team has no money is Rams linebacker Corey Littleton. First of all, it's in the name, with Littleton being one of Denver's premier suburbs. Second, he's one of the best pass coverage inside linebackers in the league, and he had the same number of tackles as Todd Davis last season, which tied him for eighth most. Between Todd Davis, Alexander Johnson, and Corey Littleton, the Broncos would have the range at linebacker to do whatever they wanted defensively. Whatever they wanted. Or, and more likely, the Broncos could pursue Browns linebacker Joe Schobert, who the Browns announced will be a free agent last week, I believe. There have been many rumors or reports or rumor reports linking Schobert to Denver. Schobert and the Browns couldn't agree to a, a contract, so he might be expensive. He wants 10 million plus per year, but like Littleton, he's turned into a very good coverage linebacker. And the Browns released another linebacker who I'll get to in a minute. I already discussed corners Logan Ryan and Prince Amukamara as options in the AJ Boye trade episode, so rewatch that if you want my thoughts there. I feel though like Denver might sign Amukamara for depth, uh, but they do have Devontae Bosby within reach, and he was actually playing much better at corner than Yadam or Devontae Harris before he got hurt last year, so I'm really pulling for Bosby. It's also been very well established that the Broncos want someone to step up behind Phillip Lindsay, and Kenyon Drake is one of the guys I thought that could fill that role in the mid-tier range if they don't draft a player. Drake was dying in Miami, then he got traded to Arizona where he thrived, 643 yards and eight tutties in just eight games for the Cardinals. Also, his name is Kenyon, literally the fastest people on earth. And Drake, literally the greatest and possibly only Canadian rapper. Drake now wants eight plus million a season, which may make a guy like Jordan Howard a much better option with the Broncos. What they need to do is pay a Kenyon price for a Drake-like performance. Uh -huh. Finally, here's some shots in the dark that are low risk, high reward uh, players. Danny Trevathan. Hello, old friend. Denver's defense has always had a missing piece post Super Bowl 50 and Danny Trevathan was it. He's a prolific tackler and excellent in coverage, something the Broncos could use against a guy like Travis Kelsey and the Chiefs. Trevathan won't break the bank on his third contract and could really help out for a couple of years. Danny is only 29, will be 30 by the time the season starts. Obviously, he played with Fangio in Chicago and could be more cost-effective than Corey Littleton or Joe Schobert. The biggest question with Danny is health. He landed on IR twice in his four seasons in Chicago, and last year dislocated or broke his elbow tackling Jeff fucking Driscoll trying not to put his body weight on him. Now another Browns linebacker was released in Christian Kierksey. He's a super talented player who has had injury problems, which makes him affordable. Just nine games played in the last two seasons, but he was a stud before that and is only 27. Again, I don't even know if the Broncos really, really want a linebacker or need one, but those are some good options to add depth to the position. The Broncos, need a backup quarterback if they cut Joe Flacco and God forbid someone touches Drew Locke. Personally, I'd call the Baltimore Ravens about this RG3 trade Twitter is discussing. The funniest way to replace Joe Flacco would be to sign his backup's backup. Griffin is owed just two million in 2020, but has stated he wants uh, to compete for a starting job. For one year, he'd be much cheaper than Flacco, even if Flacco somehow decided to restructure his deal to stay in Denver, which I don't think is happening, and I think it's just a matter of time before the Broncos cut him. Thanks for watching That's Good Sports. Subscribe here on YouTube. I'm on Twitter, Instagram, at Brendan Perna. Oh.